So let's do a demo uh, just for setting up a new game in Ascendancy. So we press the New Game button, and that takes us to the Game Setup screen. We'll also explore just a few of the species and uh, listen to some of their music during this demo. So here we have the New Game Setup screen, and here you can see uh, buttons related to um, star density in your star cluster, uh, number of species in the game, diplomatic atmosphere, player color, and down here is the row of 21 species that you can choose to, uh, to be. Um, so for example, let's just stick with the oculons here, right here, and blue isn't bad for them, but we can cycle through some colors pick yellow, and instead of a sparse star cluster, we'll go to very dense. Um, let's just go straight up to seven species, and your diplomatic atmosphere is hostile, peaceful, or neutral, and um, that would be a perfect, perfectly good game setup to get started. Um, we press the right arrow, and that takes us to the Oculons page. Press, we would press the right arrow here to go to the new game and get started, and that would take us to the star map, and uh, that's a whole other demo and tutorial. Uh, but let's go back here and explain just a little bit more. Um, a very dense star cluster is the largest size galaxy in which you can play a game of Ascendancy, and depending on your style of play and how many of your planets you want to set on auto-manage, a, um, a very dense game could take uh, a very, very long time to play. It would be a game that some people, um, depending upon how many hours they were able to play, might save and load that game over a span of weeks or even months. Uh, whereas a vacuous star cluster is a game that could play start to finish in uh, a, a very short amount of time. Uh, I mean, literally, depending on certain starting factors like where species are and um, how quickly you're able to get to certain stages uh, a game like that could take an hour even uh, and then you have several steps in between and that includes also the number of species now in a small in a very uh, vacuous star cluster if you were to play with seven species in the game that would be incredibly crowded um, and it's a very fun way to play but it can also end for you very quickly. Um, sometimes the game will just start with you pinched off into a certain system and you might be up against a species that has a special ability that really gives them an advantage in early stages of the game. Um, and if a game doesn't get out of the early stages, they could really take you on pretty well. Um, and then there's a, just a mix of, again, any level in between. A vacuous star cluster with three species would be an entirely different game. And that goes conversely with uh, a very dense star cluster with only three species. Would um, It could, depending upon where they are placed in the beginning of the game, it could take a very, very long time before you even have any inkling they're out there. Um, and any step in between. Diplomatic atmosphere is fairly self-explanatory. Um, if you're just starting out and you don't want to have um, certain species are, are, are going to lean aggressive whether the atmosphere is peaceful or not, but the atmosphere does set a, a very broad and general tone about how species interaction is going to work and how sensitive other species are to, to things that would, um, would cause them concern. Uh, and so neutral would, would be in between and hostile would mean, for example, if you have a ship hovering in a system that is controlled by another species and it's just sitting there, um, it does create a certain amount of tension and hostility. In a hostile atmosphere, that would provoke another species to declare war against you quite a bit sooner than, than the other two settings. Um, and then player color is self-explanatory, just pick one you like, because that's going to be the color of your domain as it spreads throughout the star system and um, 
and your icon is, uh, is going to be that color as well and it will help you differentiate uh, what's going on. <coughs> So let's uh, just look at some of the species. I don't want to um, give away too many spoilers, but um, each species has its own unique ability and its own soundtrack. The actual the, the ability really does um, very often change the entire flavor of gameplay for the, for the player, and the combination of other species chosen in the game also means a different combination of special abilities. These abilities have very strategic effects in the game. For example, the Chamachis. They're determined researchers, and when you play the game you find out that they uh, they really are ha have an advantage when it comes to moving down the, the research tree. You can see um, the Chamachis, it says, love, love gadgets and technology. They're able to discover major breakthroughs quickly when under duress. Stress heightens their scientific abilities, and you can read a full background, a, a sort of an evolutionary history of your species, and then the next page gives you your own specific uh, working orders, or, or at least uh, sort of an overall emphasis that you're the leader of your species, and um, and you need to take care of them. <clears throat> And as you can see, along with the unique ability and the unique music, each species does have its own personality. For example, here are the Marmosians. Territorial insectoid creatures from the inner world of a hot sun. You can hear from their music, they, um, they just have a, a fairly aggressive and even arrogant personality. And you can, can contrast that with a species like the Orpha. And the Orpha <clears throat> are a very morose species. They have no known natural enemies. Nothing on their homeworld is able to make a dent in their impregnable hide. Just, uh, I like the music for the Capilons, and then I'm going to let you f explore species on your own after this. And thanks for listening.